Hij heeft hem niet achter zijn oor. I declare the meeting open. Uh, and I bid you, Mr. Blas Renault, most heartily welcome. You may now give a brief exposition of your research, of your reasons for having undertaken it, and of the results it has yielded. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Director Magnificus. Good afternoon, members of the doctoral committee, the supervisory team, my mother, who has traveled from Venezuela, my partner and my family in the Netherlands, family and friends uh, and in, in Venezuela and elsewhere in the world, and my colleagues here, friends and family too, thank you for coming. I'm really happy to today to present the main findings of my dissertation on oil price trends and fluctuations. My motivation behind this study is twofold. First, as a Venezuelan, I have seen how oil price movement have had an impact of the oil socioeconomic development of my country over the last 120 years. Second, as a professional in the oil industry, I realized the importance of having solid indicators for understanding oil price determinants. This is crucial for making informed decisions regarding investments and market strategies. Despite my active participation in numerous international conferences featuring all economists, some of them considered pop stars in the field, my quest for understanding remained largely unsatisfied. And this is understandable, as the oil market is very complex. And when researchers tackle this complexity with limited theoretical resources, there is a significant risk of oversimplifying the explanation of prices. This results in confusion where symptoms are mistaken for causes. Furthermore, the oil market has changed over the last two decades, making it even more challenging to understand. For the, on the supply side, we've seen the rise of shale oil in the US, the reactivation of oil production in Russia and Central Asia, an important rearrangement within the OPEC. On the demand side, we've seen an increase in oil consumption in China and India, alongside a significant decrease in Japan and Western Europe. Moreover, tensions surrounding the environmental impact of fossil fuels, including concerns about global warming, have produced environmental policies with the intention of blocking oil companies' new investments. Therefore, it's crucial to empirically understand the determinants of oil prices with better theoretical foundations to reach plausible explanations. As such, the thesis, this thesis aims to explain oil prices trends and fluctuations. From 1960 to 2019, considering socio-historical and institutional factors, analyzing the trends on the global production cost, and understanding the connection between price fluctuations and business cycles. The chosen period represents different institutional settings, starting with the last phase of long price stability until 1973, which marked the beginning of a time when oil prices started to change frequently rather than remain stable. In that sense, the literature review became the beating heart of my PhD. And the starting point for organizing the alternative explanation, I examined a standard explanation to establish empirical and conceptual foundations for an informed, non-deterministic explanation. During the literature review, I've seen searching for answer to my research question, which is, 
What determines trends and cyclical movement in oil prices? I devoted my efforts to understand the epistemological foundations, variables, causal chains, nuances, strengths, and weaknesses of the neoclassical perspective on oil prices. The fundamental theoretical finding is the failure of authors to distinguish between trends and fluctuations, and between relative real and money prices. Indeed, standard authors focus their explanation using scarcity and demand as the main drivers of oil price formation. Those attempting should start with an explanation of relative price, not money prices, as most of do. In other words, according to the neoclassical assumptions, they should explain oil prices by relative demand and relative scarcity, and not by explaining absolute demand and absolute scarcity. Consequently, according to the conventional perspective, the price reflects a bargaining process in absolute terms. This omission, the omission of relative price, a cornerstone of the classical approach, undermines the conventional explanation provided by authors reviewed. These insights led me to categorize a standard explanation into two groups, natural supply constraints and artificial con supply constraints. The natural supply constraints perspective suggests that oil depletion is inevitable, prompting producers to limit supply to ensure a steady income stream. Authors in this category often draw a hot, on, on Hotelin, 1931, it's a famous paper, and Hoover, 1956, also a famous paper. Notable figures include James Smith, Christian Baumaster, James Hamilton, and Lutz Killian. On the other hand, Artificial supply constraint approach argues that there is no depletion issues as oil resources are abundant worldwide. According to this perspective, since the 90s, 1970s, major oil producing countries, particularly OPEC members, have intentionally restricted access to exploration and extraction, taking advantage of their low production costs to drive prices up and meet their fiscal objectives. For instance, in this perspective, the famous Morris Adelman is a prominent figure in this perspective, among others. And looking at fluctuations, conventional authors typically explain the short-run movement as determined by unpredictable supply and demand shocks. According to the author reviewed, the source of these unpredictable shocks are diverse and could come from financial sector, OPEC, spillout, and political crises, among others. According to the standard perspective, all these events tend to push price around and represent the terrible imperfection of oil prices, of oil market. The failure of these conventional insights drove me to develop an alternative explanation. An alternative explanation of oil price should distinguish between trends and fluctuations. Additionally, it is essential to highlight the qualitative aspect of institutional structures and acknowledge the substantial impact of production costs on trends on, and global business cycles on fluctuations. This is the most important chart of my research. The chart shows the extraction costs in the U.S. and Venezuela. The West Texas Intermediate Oil Price Marker, also known as WTI, and the Venezuela Basket Oil Prices. By the way, Venezuela is there in this chart because it represents a middle-aged oil country with 120 years of oil production with an average productivity rate above the world average and below the OPEC one. The Venezuelan oil statistic from 1925 on to, uh, to 2012 12 are reliable and have a high level of comparability with the oil statistic in the US. The first key empirical finding here is the existence of an oil price trend. Notably, from 1950 to 2019, 
there is a high correlation between WTI and Venezuela's basket oil prices. They consistently move in tandem over this period. By the way, we later understand why from 1950 to, to 1973, we are going to see almost a perfect correlation, but it's related to the cartel, the real cartel. Here, you can see a strong correlation between US production costs and the trajectory of both the WTI and the Venezuelan market. Moreover, the chart illustrates the disparity in extraction costs between the US and Venezuela. The former explains the presence of important differential rents, oil rents, in international oil markets. Surprisingly, it suggests that it's not the most efficient producer that sets the price but rather the least efficient one that determines the long-term trend. It also highlights two distinct institutional periods. The cartel dominance actually is from 1928, but the chart shows 1950. From 1950 to 1972, characterized by vertical and horizontal integration with the International Petroleum Cartel. Subsequently, from 1973 onward, there's a shift toward the cartelization and the emergency of competition between oil regions. Through this chart, one can assert that global oil capital sets prices based on its activity in the US region. The second key empirical finding is the existence of an organic connection between global business cycles and oil price fluctuations. Five complete business cycles were identified from 1975 to 2020, with oscillation between seven and 11 years and a high degree of synchronicity by throat, especially since 1992. Finally, this is the dissertation proposed and then demonstrate that there are more plausible and empirically verifiable ways to explain oil price trends and fluctuations. It has twofold implication. First, it has academic implication. It, in times of change and break of hegemonies, it is necessary to focus on studies that reveal the key factors that organize the market. By and large, economic faculties across the world have often neglected this approach with prominent exception of a few authors, such as Astrual Batista and Bernard Momer in Venezuela and Professor Cyrus Vina. They have extensively published using this alternative perspective, helping businessmen and policymakers address their functions. And second, the policy implication of this finding provide policymakers with a valuable tool to enhance their outlooks and price models, enable them to forecast economic policies and more effectively in oil producing and consuming countries. Coming to the end. <clears throat> you might be curious about this image. It represents a tomotrop. It's a toy. It's a spinning toy creating optical illusions by blending image, images on opposite sides. This symbolizes how beliefs can be mistaken for facts, whether with or without equation. It reflects the optical illusion I encountered, I even believed, and eventually overcame during this research. I felt a sense of clarity when I finally stopped this, pain, this spinning and saw through the optical effect. From there, uncovering the true determinant of oil price trends and fluctuations became relatively straightforward. 